How y'all good people doing? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to seven free stocks or $300 when you transfer your assets, your paper assets to Moomoo. They're gonna give you, you got two choices, guys. You can get seven free fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. You're talking about Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Meta, Alphabet, Amazon, Nvidia. You can get seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven when you open a new Moo Moo brokerage account and put $100 in there. They're gonna give you seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven, guys. I mean, how can you beat that? Or you can transfer paper assets or cash into your new Moo Moo account and they're gonna give you a 1.5% cash reward match for moving over assets, up to $300, up to $300, right? So you got two offers here. You can do $100 in your Moomoo account and get seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. Like I said, all big boy, blue chip, the top seven stocks in the S&P 500. That would be the Magnificent Seven. You're gonna get seven fractional shares when you deposit $100 in your Moomoo account, your new Moomoo account. Or you can transfer assets in, cash, ETFs, stocks, and get up to $300 in a cash reward match. Those are your two offers. Link down in the description box, guys, for that Moo Moo offer. Don't, don't miss this offer, guys. It's a limited time offer. It won't last forever. But who else out there is giving you free Magnificent Seven stock? Now, it's fractional shares, but it's still the Magnificent Seven. Who wouldn't want a fractional share of NVIDIA? Who wouldn't want a fractional share of Apple? Who wouldn't want a fractional share of Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, AKA Google, or Tesla? Who wouldn't want a fractional share of those seven giants? $100 in your Moomoo account, you get that. You're gonna get seven fractional shares. Or you can go ahead and elect to move over your current paper assets or cash and get yourself up to $300, cash reward match. So if you, you move over $20,000 in assets, paper assets, ETFs, stocks, cash, guess what? You're going to get $300 because 1.5% of $20,000 is $300. That's the maximum you can get, $300. Who wouldn't want $300 for moving over assets to a, 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 a brokerage app that I'm going to be using as my primary brokerage app for all of 2024 and beyond? Amazing offer, guys. You got to go down to the description box and click on that Moo Moo link and pick the one you want. Get the seven magnificent, seven fractional share stocks for $100 deposited, or elect to transfer assets over and get yourself up to 1.5% cash reward match, up to 300 bucks. 
They're giving you 300 bucks for free for moving assets where you're going to be building wealth anyways, right? You're going to be building wealth anyways. Why not get your 300 bucks to do it? If you already got a brokerage account that you, you can move assets over. And if you don't have that, just take the, the Magnificent Seven stocks. They're going to give you fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven, guys. You're talking about the seven largest companies in the S&P 500. Come on, down in the description box, go ahead and click on that Moomoo link. Well, let's continue to move on, guys. We got a lot to unpack today, and we're going to be talking about the Fed and what they just said that I believe will skyrocket all assets. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about real estate, how you can actually purchase a home, a home for $1. You can purchase a home for $1. <laughs> it, seems, it sounds too good to be true, but you can. We're going to talk about that too. For all you, for all you folks out there that are saying, I want, a, I, I, I want a rental property. I want to get some rental income. I want to build a real estate portfolio. Guess what? Here's an opportunity we're going to talk about where you can do that. We're going to talk about that as well. We're also going to talk about what will happen to Bitcoin if the Federal Reserve, not if, when the Federal Reserve starts reducing interest rates. We're going to talk about what is the fate of Bitcoin when that happens. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Tesla. You guys know I'm a big Tesla guy. And we're going to talk about Tesla getting to $1,000 per share by the year 2030. I keep telling y'all guys, and what's Tesla? A Magnificent Seven company, right? It's a Magnificent Seven company. But we're going to talk about how Tesla gets to $1,000 a share by 2030. What is it trading at today, guys? Last time I checked, it was about 175 bucks, 175 dollars a share. How does it go from 175 to a thousand dollars a share by 2030? You're talking about six years, guys. I, I, I've been telling you guys, Tesla is going to explode. Now, I'm not your financial advisor, and I'm not telling you to go out there and buy a bunch of Tesla. But what I am telling you is, if you buy Tesla today. And you can hold it for six years and it goes from one seventy five a share to a thousand dollars a share. Do you think you'd be happy in six years? I'm going to let you answer that. I, I, I know the answer for me. I, I, I'm all over it. But we're going to talk about that a little bit, too. Why there are folks out there, including myself, who believe Tesla can be a thousand dollars a share stock in less than six years. Now, whether you jump on the bandwagon or not, that's, that's up to you. You've got to have your own financial plan. But what I can tell you, this is a game changer, guys. So, so, so stick around for that. Those are the areas that we're going to cover. We're going to talk about, like I said, this, this thing with the Fed and what they're saying, which, will, which, which could drastically affect our, our assets, all of our assets here in the U.S., all of the assets, right? We're going to talk about that. And uh, one thing I want you guys to, 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 to understand is the whole point of doing all of this is to give you guys information so that you can build wealth. That's the whole point of doing this, right? So, so know that. The whole point of doing this is to give you information that you can then use to transform your financial life into something great. Because a lot of us are down here in this bust economy we want to get up here to this boom economy. This is the information that takes you there. So let's start off with this information uh, about the Fed. And, and, and let's, let's, let's talk about it a little bit. Here's the headline. U.S. Bank agrees to switching to gold standard will stabilize prices. Right? Inflation 
is a cause of worry in the U.S. when the BRICS alliance is looking to dump the dollar. BRICS also accumulated tons of gold in 18 months to become the largest purchaser of precious metal in fiscal year 2022 through 2024. Researchers with the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia published a report citing that switching to the gold standard could stabilize prices. So basically what they're telling you is going from the dollar as the world's reserve currency going back to the gold standard where it used to be. The gold standard used to be the world's reserve currency. Then it went to the dollar. Now the Fed, Federal Reserve of Philadelphia, is saying that switching to the gold standard could stabilize prices. If prices stabilize, what does that mean? Inflation comes down. That's what that means, guys. Inflation comes down. And if inflation comes down, what happens to interest rates? They come down. And if interest rates come down, what happens to assets? They go up, right? So th this is what the Fed is saying. Now, Federal Reserve, Bank of Philadelphia, but nevertheless, it's the Fed. It's still the Federal Reserve, guys, right? You st it's still the Federal Reserve saying this. So let's, let's read on and see what, it, what they're saying. The researchers agree that if the U.S. transacts the researchers argue that if the U.S. transitions to the gold standard, it would make money non-neutral. Shifting from the U.S. dollar-based economy to the gold standard will converge to the economy's long-run equilibrium value. This is in turn would make inflation and deflation in the U.S. a a merely temporary phenomenon, wrote the bank researchers. See what I'm saying? Now they're saying, go back to the gold standard. And this could really stabilize everything here in the U.S. Go back to the gold standard and stabilize everything in the U.S. Inflation goes down, then interest rates come down, and then Assets skyrocket. This is what they're saying. These are researchers from the Federal Reserve, guys, of Philadelphia. This ain't some whack job group in some other country. No, this is the Federal Reserve here in the United States telling us the gold standard could solve all of our problems. Just go away from the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency and go back to the gold standard. Basically, that's what they're saying. Here. Shifting from the U.S. dollar-based economy, shifting away from the dollar to the gold standard will converge to the economy's long-run equilibrium value. This, in turn, would make inflation and deflation in the U.S. a merely temporary phenomenon wrote the bank researchers. BRICS could be following similar ideals as speculations are rife that they could back their yet-to-be-released currency with gold. And you know who BRICS is, right? BRICS Nation. This is a group of nations who want to dethrone the dollar. They want to create their own currency. And they're thinking that they will back their currency by gold. Over the last 24 months, they bought more gold than anybody else in the world. BRICS Nation, in the last 24 months, they bought more gold than anybody. And their new currency that they're coming out with, they're gonna back it with gold. That's what's, that's what's, let's keep reading, let's keep reading. The authors explain, now when they say authors, they're talking about the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve explained that switching to the gold standard will only cause short-term shocks, but in the long term will become a self-correcting economy. 
They're basically saying go back to the gold standard and the, our economy here in the United States becomes better. It's self-correcting. Self-correcting. Inflation goes down. We ain't got to worry about inflation, deflation. All of that goes away. Probably ain't got to worry about jacking rates anymore. And if we don't jack rates, if rates stay low, guess what happens to our assets, guys? They skyrocket. Our assets skyrocket. At least this is what the Fed is saying. This is not me saying this. This is the Federal Reserve of Philadelphia researchers. While the gold standard exposes the home country to short-term fluctuations in money, prices, and output caused by external shocks, it ensures long-term price stability and only temporarily deviate from their steady state levels. What is one of the main mandates of the Federal Reserve, guys? Price stability. That's one of the major mandates of the Federal Reserve responsibilities in our country is to establish price stability. What's price stability? Where everybody living in America can afford the basic things they need to live. That's price stability. They're telling you here, while the gold standard exposes fluctuations in money, prices and output caused by external shocks, this is what it ensures long-term price stability. As the quantity, the quantity of money and prices only temporarily deviates from their steady state levels. Because money is non-neutral, these price movements have real effects, wrote the authors, Federal Reserve. At least some home country agents will be strictly worse off in the transition path. For the uninitiated, the gold standard monetary system was the norm for many. They're just giving you a little background on the gold standard for you guys that are not aware of what that was. Listen to this. For the uninitiated, basically for the people that don't know, the gold standard monetary system was the norm for many leading economies around the world for centuries. So for centuries, the gold standard was what everybody used around the world for centuries. However, the financial system turned out inflexible and eventually collapsed at the beginning of the 20th century. That's when the U.S. dollar became the world's reserve currency at that point. They went away from the gold standard, had it for centuries, but went away from it to the U.S. dollar in the 20th century. BRICS might be considering making the system alive and backing their new currency with gold. That's what BRICS is trying to do. Now, you guys know exactly what BRICS is. They are these nations that have come together, band together, and they no longer want Western influence in their payment systems or their monetary systems. So what they're trying to do is band together as countries, create their own currency, back it with gold, and then say, hey guys, we're good to go. You ain't got to worry about us failing. If something happens, we got gold reserves and we'll give you the gold. The gold, it's backed by gold. So if something happens, we're, 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 we're collateralized by gold. Right now, the U.S. dollar is not collateralized by gold. It's collateralized by what? The full faith and strength of the U.S. government, but not gold. The U.S. dollar is not backstopped right now by gold. It's just backstopped by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Why is that a problem? Because, guys, we have $34 trillion in debt. And it's increasing. Remember, a couple of days ago, I, I told you guys, people believe by 2034, we'll be 45 trillion. Here's another article, and I'm not going to go too much into that today, but, but, but I just want to get you to understand 
where this thing is, 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 is headed here. It's, it's not good. It is not good. It is not good. There, some reports out here, some reports out here have us going to, here's the headline. America will be left with severe irreversible scars if the national debt goes unchecked. Now, a blockbuster report warns the bill is higher than believed, hitting $141 trillion. This is our deficit. This is our debt, guys, in the U.S. $141 trillion by 2054. That's why they're starting to, the people are starting to say, well, golly, guys, you know, should we should you know should the U.S. dollar be backed by gold instead of the government? Because the government is finna tally up 141 trillion dollars in debt over the next 30 years. Should it be backstopped by gold and not the U.S. government? Should it be backstopped by gold? And the Federal Reserve of Philadelphia is saying that's not a bad idea. It probably should be. Just saying, just saying, we're not going to get into the debt thing today, but I just wanted to give you guys a little picture of why the Federal Reserve of Philadelphia is coming out with this and saying, listen, the U.S. dollar is facing some problems, and the way we kind of fix that is well, let's backstop it with gold. I don't know. Let's backstop it with gold, and we'll see what the rest of the country believes about that, but I don't think that's a bad idea. What do you guys think? Would you prefer the U.S. dollar backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government or backed by gold? Gold is the collateral. Would that make the rest of the world feel better? I don't know. I, I do know this. I do know this, and this is, this is why I led with this story, and this is why you see the title the way it is. I do know this. The lower inflation is, the lower interest rates are, our assets go to the moon. The more we have the ability to build wealth. The higher interest rates are, the higher inflation is, the less opportunity we have to build wealth. So if gold gives us that backstop we need to make sure we can get inflation under 2%, to make sure we can keep short-term interest rates under 2%, why not try it? Let's do it. I don't know. You, you got BRICS Nation out there creating their own currency that's going to be backed by gold. And, and, and it's going to be really attractive to the world. Because the world is going to say, shoot, what do we got to lose, guys? It's backed by gold. If, if something happens, there's gold as collateral. That's a universal currency. Has been for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So, so, so BRICS understands that, the BRICS nation. So they're starting to stockpile gold. They bought more gold than anybody else over the last 18 months, two years. BRICS Nation, what do you think they're buying it for? These people, these folks are dead serious about creating their own currency. And, and who, are the, who, are the, who are the five in the BRICS Nation that originally started? Well, you got Russia. Well, let's start with Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Those are your initial five BRICS Nation. Now they're expanding this thing out to more nations. And more nations have joined them. So we want to wake up and make sure we're smelling the coffee. Hey, if we want to backstop the U.S. dollar by gold, let's do it. That's our currency. Right now, it's backstopped by just us. We ain't doing too good, especially with reports that we're going to have a national debt of $141 trillion by, by 2054. Guys, you got to understand we're at $34 trillion now. So 30 years from now, we're going to more than what? Quadruple it? I mean, what, what triple it? We're going to triple it? Shoot. Quadruple?
quadruple it. We're going to quadruple the national debt in 30 years, according to this article right here. According to this article, we're going to quadruple it. Which is which is insanity. It's insane. Insane. America will be left with severe irreversible scars if national debt goes unchecked. Now, a blockbuster report warns the bill is higher than believed, hitting one hundred and forty one trillion by twenty fifty four. What do you guys think that's going to do to assets? What do you think is going to do to inflation? What do you think is going to do to interest rates if that's true? It's going to destroy us. It's going to destroy assets. With a debt that high? Guys, we got we to gotta do something. So I think the Federal Reserve of Philadelphia is basically saying, listen, in order to stabilize this thing, Let's think about backstopping it, collateralizing it with gold. Yeah, let's, let's think about that. Let, let's, let's, let's take that in consideration. Researchers argue that if the U.S. transitioned to gold standard, it would make money non-neutral, shifting from the U.S. dollar-based economy to the gold standard will converge to the economy's long-run equilibrium value. This, in turn, would make inflation and deflation in the U.S. a merely temporary phenomenon, wrote the bank researchers. That's the Federal Reserve researchers, right? They're telling you that. So here's the deal. Whether you like it or not, you got the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. They've published a report on it. So I, I, it doesn't matter what I think or what you think. The world knows now. Everybody in the United States will know this because the, 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 obviously the Federal Reserve think it's, think it's smart. It's a good move. <laughs> of course, we're going to always have somebody think they're smarter than the Federal Reserve. We're going to have one guy in, in some cubby hole somewhere. He's going to think he's smarter than the Federal Reserve. Oh, I'm smarter than the Federal Reserve. That's a dumb idea. You shouldn't do that. I tell you, boy, we're a trip, aren't we? <laughs> We, 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 one person thinking we know more than the whole Federal Reserve. Insanity. I think it's a great idea to think about. I think it's a great idea to definitely vet. But, but, but here's the deal. Anything that helps my assets multiply, I'm all for it. You want to backstop it with gold? Backstop it. I don't care. Whatever you want to do, as long as we get inflation down, as long as interest rates come down, my assets go up, period. As long as inflation is high, as long as interest rates are high, my assets don't go to the moon. They don't go to the moon. The rocket ship don't take off. Not the way I needed to take off over the next 10 years. Don't take off. I needed to take off. I needed to go to the moon. So, 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 so the Federal Reserve of Philadelphia is saying, hey, here's an alternative. We, we may want to consider this. We may want to consider the gold standard. We may want to consider that. So what do you guys think about that? I know already I've seen a couple people in here. Oh, that's stupid. That's crazy. Hey, make your case. You know, put you a video out, you know, outlining why it's stupid. I love when people say stuff is stupid, but they got nothing to, 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 to nothing to put forward that would make it stupid. Why is it stupid? <laughs> if it brings price stability to our economy, why would it be stupid? Make your case. Don't just sit on here and be and just say stuff and don't have no no way of stating reasons why you think it's stupid. Give some give some logical, valid reasons why it's stupid. Um, and then and then maybe somebody will listen to you outside of that. You just you, you, you're just not it, it doesn't make any sense. Right. So let's move on. Let's move on and talk a little bit about this uh, buying real estate for a dollar and here in our country. I read this story and I thought it was pretty interesting. 
And for those of you who want to be real estate investors, there are places around the country that this is happening. So think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Buying a piece of real estate for a dollar. There are places in this country you can do that. Check it out. Here's the headline. You could buy a house in Baltimore for one dollar. After plan OK to sell some city owned properties. So you can go to Baltimore and you can buy a place for a buck. Not bad, huh? Let's read on. Baltimore officials approved a program that would sell city owned vacant homes for as little as a dollar. One dollar, you can go buy a home. One dollar, guys, in Baltimore. The city's board of estimates voted on the program during a meeting on Wednesday morning, despite pushback from city council president Nick Mosby. Just outvoted it. He, he, he lost that battle. The board passed the new pricing structure for city owned vacant homes on the Buy Into Be More website. So you can go to the Buy Into Be More website, guys. One dollar. How you gonna beat that? One dollar. Check this out, though. In the four to one vote, where Mosby was the sole opposition, Baltimore has over 13,000 500 vacant properties, nearly 900 of which are owned by the city, according to the Department of Housing and Community Development. The fixed price program would only apply to certain city owned properties, according to a page on DHCD's website. Hmm. Buyers need to promise to fix up the homes, though. So here's the catch, guys. Here's the catch. <laughs> Those purchasing a home in the program must promise to renovate the property and have at least 90000 to fix it up. That's the catch. So must not be move-in ready. Not for a dollar. It's not move-in ready, guys. You got to have some money to fix it up. Owners must also move in within a year and stay in the home for five years. Woo. They want you to move in and stay in for five years. I don't know how they're going to monitor that, but okay. I don't know how they monitor that, but okay. If I'm an investor, I'll stay in it for five years, right? I'll stay in it for five years. I don't know how they're going to monitor that but I'll stay in it for five years. During Wednesday's meeting, Mosby said the program does not have guardrails written in place that would ensure city residents have priority to buy these homes and won't be forced out of these neighborhoods while their conditions improve. See, there's the key, guys. You live in Baltimore already. You already know these houses over there and ain't nobody. So investors can come in now and buy these properties. Listen, guys, I know some of y'all are like, oh, listen, man, this is an opportunity you, you don't want to pass up. I guarantee you what's going to happen. Now, this program for the dollar, you'll, you'll see, is just for individuals, but you better believe the 1% will be swooping in some kind of way to buy up all of this stuff for a dollar a, 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 a dollar a home They'll come in, regentrify it, boop, put a Starbucks on the corner, and sell these things for three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what's gonna happen. But if you're a smart investor and you're looking for real estate for income, this not, might, might not be a bad opportunity for you. Might not be a bad opportunity for you. It's affordable. It's affordability and affordable home ownership and equity and all of the nice words we like to use are really at the core competency as it relates to property disposition. This is a really bad policy. This is what the one guy, everybody else voted for it, but this one guy, right? He's saying it's a bad policy because it doesn't protect or prioritize the rights of folks in the communities. Here's what I say. The folks that live in those communities have been living there for a long time. 
They ain't done nothing yet. So why not outside people can't come in and beautify this thing and, and, and bring it up, bring it up to a, 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 an acceptable living space that people can move in, feel safe, thrive, make some money. Baltimore res residents have been living there for a long time and they ain't done nothing. So I'm not sure why we want to, you know, only Baltimore residents can buy it. No, open it up to the free market. If Baltimore residents want to buy it and they want to spend their dollar and buy it, buy it. But if they don't want to buy it, open it up to the market. Let other folks come in there and buy these properties and, and renovate them and, 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 and put some tenants in them. Put this thing back on the, the tax roll for the city of Baltimore. Right now, they, they get no tax revenue. They get no, no tax revenue for these vacant homes. Put them back on the tax roll. And if Baltimore residents want to be a part of that, let them be a part of it. They get first crack. But if they don't want to be a part of it, don't say, oh, nobody else can't come in from outside to do it. That, I don't think that's right. As part of the program, only individual buyers and community land trusts would be able to purchase the properties for a dollar. So individual buyers and community land trusts can purchase the properties for a dollar. Nonprofits with 50 or fewer employees would pay a thousand dollars, while developers and nonprofits with more than 50 employees will pay up to 3K. Well, who do you think going to go ahead and pay that 3K? They're not going to worry about it. 1% ain't going to worry about the 3K. They're going to come in and buy all that up. Promise you. We will revisit the story, guys. All I'm telling you is, if you're anywhere near the Baltimore area, I don't care where you live, it may be worth going on to that website and checking out these properties and seeing if it's worth a look at. I, I, I get emails from you guys all the time. Oh, how can I get into real estate? I don't got much. But how can I get into real estate? There you go. Bingo. That's how you get into it. Go get you a property for $1. Get you some fix-up money. Fix it up. Boom. Boom. For 90 grand, basically, you got a new home. In a pretty deep... I mean, don't get me wrong. Baltimore has its, its problems with crime and stuff. But, hey, listen... If more, people are going to come into that area and buy up those properties, guys, I'm telling you they are. Go to their website, Buy Into Be More website. That's what it's called. Buy Into Be More website. Go into the website, check it out, and, 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 and see if, that, if there's an opportunity for you. I, 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 I don't understand why you wouldn't at least check it out. Again, as part of the program, only individual buyers and community land trusts will be able to purchase the properties for a dollar. Okay? Nonprofits with 50 or fewer employees, $1,000. Developers and nonprofits with over 50 employees, $3,000. But guys, that's still dirt cheap. That's still dirt cheap. It's still dirt cheap. What do you guys think about that? I don't know much, much about Baltimore, but goodness gracious, if that program works, you're going to probably have some cities around the country do the same thing. Maybe in Detroit, maybe in St. Louis, maybe in Chicago. You know, I, I think it's a great opportunity for someone that wants to get into real estate. Check out that website, guys. Go get you a, a property for a dollar. Put you some money into renovating it, especially if you're a person who, who knows how to renovate, who, who, who's, who's good at construction. You could do the work yourself. Pull the permits yourself, get in there, get hands on. Instead of paying 90K, maybe, maybe it costs you 60K since you're doing the work yourself. Now you got a property for 60K that you can put a tenant in there and get you some positive cash flow. At least that's what I think. Give, give it a thought. Think about it. Now let's go into Tesla. We're going to talk a little bit about Tesla, part of the Magnificent Seven. Headline, can Tesla stock reach $1,000 by 2030?
That's the headline. Can Tesla go from 170-ish, that's where it's at today, guys, to $1,000 a share? And what would that mean for an investor like you and I if we believe in this and we jump on the bandwagon right now? We, we basically 10x our investment, almost. We 9x it. We 9x the investment. I mean, 9x it, guys. Come on. 9x. This is Tesla we're talking about. Can they do it? Here's the business case. In recent times, you will struggle to find businesses that performed better for investors than Tesla. In the past five year period, the top electric vehicle stock has skyrocketed 908% over the last five years, guys. That's Tesla stock. And guess what? Your boy was a part of that. Yes, I was. I was a part of that growth. I rode that rocket ship a couple of times. I mean, I'm on the rocket ship right now waiting for it to go up to the moon again. Not yet, but it's coming. But I've been on the rocket ship a couple of times and it made a lot of money with Tesla. So I know exactly what the author of this article is talking about over the last five years. The question is, what will happen over the next five years? Can it do it again? And the next question is, will you be on the rocket ship? I don't know. You got to answer that question. It hasn't been a smooth ride this year, though. Shares are down 28%. But is that an opportunity? Does that present an opportunity for us? With shares being down 28%, guys, does that present an opportunity for us? I think it does. I think it presents an opportunity. It hasn't been a smooth ride this year, though. Shares are down 28% in 2024, as of March 27th as investors appear to be growing pessimistic about the Elon Musk-led enterprise. Maybe this is the right time to buy the dip in the hopes that Tesla can continue being a winner over the long term. See, I like that buy the dip. They down by 28% this year, guys. A lot of y'all always asking me, when do I build wealth? How do I buy? When do I buy? Guys, I'm not your financial advisor, but here's a little tip from 25 years worth of experience buying and selling stock on my own. It's a big boy blue chip company. It's the number one company in its space. When you talk about EV cars, guys, Tesla is the number one in the space. It has the number one charging network in the world. It's the number one EV manufacturer in the world. Makes the most profit per EV sold. I don't know. I think it's a good bet. I think they go back to the moon again, but that's just me. You got to figure it out for yourself. Maybe this is the right time to buy the dip in the hopes that Tesla can continue being a winner over the long term. But can the stock raise or rise 456% between now and 2030 to reach $1,000 a share? That's the question. Can the stock increase itself by 456% between now, 2024, and 2030? That's the question, to get to $1,000 a share. I think it can. I think it can, but that's just my opinion. Let's read on. In order for Tesla shares to increase at a compounded annual rate of roughly 33% over the next six years, or so years to get to a thousand, I see really one main thing that needs to happen. And that's a re-acceleration of growth for the overall business. And I agree with this guy. That's the key. That's the key. Got to sell more EVs. Now we do know, and I may be jumping the gun here a little bit. I I'm going to save that. Let's just, I'm going to save that because I believe that's in the article and I'm going to save that. But that's the key, though. Reacceleration of growth. Got to sell more EVs. Got to sell more EVs. That's the key, right? Last year, things slowed down 
in a dramatic fashion. Tesla sales increased by just 19% in 2023 with a disappointing 3% increase in the fourth quarter. See, they didn't have the fourth quarter 2023 that they hoped for. I mean, they weren't drastically below expectations. They just didn't do what, what, what the market thought they should have done. For the company that has given investors greater than 50% annual revenue jumps on numerous occasions, this is a new normal to contend with. Higher interest rates are a big headwind when consumers look to purchase new cars. What do you think going to happen, guys, when the Fed start reducing these rates and these car loan rates come down? Do you think that helps Tesla or hurts Tesla? I don't know, guys. It's currently at a 28% discount. Do you think when rates come down, it helps Tesla or hurt Tesla when it comes to selling cars? Guys, you got to put two and two together. We got to start thinking like investors. Now is probably the opportunity to pick up this thing at a discount because I believe when rates go down, it only helps Tesla sell more vehicles. Why? More people can go out and get loans. More people can afford it. More people buy it. Just my thought process for a company that has given investors greater than 50% annual revenue jumps on numerous occasions. This is a new normal to contend with. Higher interest rates are a big headwind when consumers look to purchase new cars. The good news, though, is that the EV industry is still in the early innings. In 2022, 14% of all passenger vehicles sold worldwide were EVs, just 14%, guys. This is still a massive runway for these cars to penetrate the market and take share from traditional gas-powered machines. If you know what's happening in the world, guys, to your normal gas-powered cars, Europe and other parts of the country they're starting to tighten down on that. If you look at what Mercedes, BMW, they're going away from these massive V8 engines. Everything now that they're producing, even Ferrari, Lamborghini, everything they're producing now is hybrid. Smaller engines, more batteries. What do you think is gonna happen in the next 20 years as gasoline engines get phased out because of what? Pollution. What do you think is going to take some of that market share? I think it's going to be electric vehicles, EVs. So they're only got a 14% penetration. In the next 30 years, guys, it could be 70% of the cars on the road could be EVs. Who do you think is leading the industry? Tesla. I'm just telling you guys, 10 years from now, you're going to kick yourself. When you could have thought, goodness gracious, I could have bought this thing at 170 a share. Now it's trading at 1,000, 1,500, 1,700. It done split two or three times. I'm telling you guys, you better figure out what's going on with this world, man, and with, this, with Tesla. Because I'm telling you, gasoline cars are going by way of the dodo bird. I'm a gasoline, I'm a... a, 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 a you know, I like to hear my engine. I'm one of those guys. But I know it's going to end at some point. Just telling you. I'm just telling you. Think about it. I don't care. All I care about is, is what's coming. And how can I get on that wagon and make me some money and double my net worth? Tesla is one of those companies I believe I can do that with. That's why I already have a long-term position in Tesla. And I'm going to stay with it. Because I believe over the next 10 years, I'm going to make a lot of money with Tesla. A lot of money. I'm going to make a lot of money with Tesla as soon as these interest rates start coming down. And people are able to get out and buy more cars. 
And you know Tesla's coming out with an EV for 25 grand. So for all you guys in here, oh, they're too expensive. Oh, they're too expensive. They're coming out one for 25 grand. Game changer. Game changer when that happens. I'm just letting you know, they're coming out with one for 25 grand, Tesla. And when they do, whoo, for all y'all that's sitting on the sideline, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Here we go. The good news, though, is that the EV industry is still in early innings. In 2022, 14% of all passenger vehicles sold worldwide were EVs. There's still a massive runway for these cars to penetrate the market and take share from traditional gas-powered machines. Given that Tesla commands about 55% of the industry's unit sales in the U.S., 55%. That's what they're doing in the U.S. 55% of the sales of EVs are Tesla. So somebody buying them, they just got to penetrate the rest of the world. That's, that's, what, that's what he's trying to do. It is in a prime position to benefit if unit sales and revenue figures start to pick up and post growth is, and post growth, let's see here, if Unit sales and revenue figures start to pick up and post growth that is remotely close to level seen a few years ago, the stock is on its way to rewarding shareholders. Margins will start to expand once again as Tesla benefits from manufacturing efficiencies. In the bullish scenario, people who are really on the bandwagon like me, in the bullish scenario, hitting the $1,000 mark seems like a certain outcome. I think it's going to happen, guys. Why? It already did it before. So you got to understand, you got to look at the history. It done done it before. It'll do it again. It will do it again. But there are some reasons for investors to temper their expectations a bit. Not only is it bold to think that a stock can increase at an annualized pace of 35% over the next six years when the company's current market cap is $560 billion. But a few factors add bearishness to the question. Now, Tesla's down, guys. Their market cap used to be higher than that. But it's down. It's significantly down. It's at $560 billion today, but it's down. Right? It's been higher than that in the past. And I think it'll get back higher than that in the future. What if the U.S. economy and other major economies remain in high, in higher rate environments above the level in the 2010s for longer than anticipated? Because monthly payments for consumers are higher, this could pressure sales not just for a Tesla, but for all automakers. I just told you all that. It's all predicated on these interest rates. But you know, and I know, they got to bring these interest rates down. And they're going to be bringing them down. And when they do, guys, when these interest rates come down, just like they were in 2020, 2021, when Tesla was killing it, that was because of low interest rates. When those low interest rates come back into play, which they will, I believe Tesla will kill it again. And that's where I'm going to get the bounce that I'm looking for. I'm going to get the bounce. There's intense competition in the EV space, Tesla deserves credit for spearheading the EV movement and prompting other businesses to follow suit. But consumers have so many choices these days. Competition is partly why Tesla had to cut prices on its models multiples, multiple times throughout 2023. It's reasonable to assume that a company's growth will start to taper off no business, I don't care how revolutionary its technology is or how disrupt disruptive its products are or how visionary its leader is, can grow to the sky. Tesla has already captured low-hanging fruit. As a result, its gains going forward are likely to be much more muted than the past. While shares have fallen, they still remain expensive, in my opinion. This is the author of the article traded at a price to earnings or a P.E. ratio of 41.7 implies rosy projections. 
which might not end up happening based on what I just outlined. So for me, I, I, I still believe, guys, although there are headwinds, I still believe when rates come down, I still believe when Tesla introduces this, this, this $25,000 EV game changer. That's what I believe. I believe as soon as they introduce that $25,000 EV, especially here in the United States, it's going to be a game changer in my opinion. That coupled with interest rates, I still think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really good chance it could get to $1,000 a share at some point over the next five to six years. I don't know that for a fact, guys. I'm just telling you that's what I'm hanging my hat on. And I'm a long-term guy when it comes to Tesla. I still think it's a, a $2 trillion market cap in the next 10 years. I think it's a $2 million market cap, $2 trillion market cap in, 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 in the next 10 years. That, that's what I believe. So I'm gonna hang my hat on that. I'm gonna keep rocking with Tesla. I'm gonna keep buying the stock. I'm gonna keep, hey, I'm gonna be optimistic about it. Long as they're the number one EV company in the world, um, I'm with them. I'm with them because I believe that's the future. Like I said, especially once they introduce this new um, $25,000 EV. I, I, think, I think once they do that, guys, that's the game changer, in my opinion. That, that is the game changer, in my opinion. That is the game changer. So let's move on and let's talk a little bit about uh, Bitcoin. And again, th this is just my daily dose of Bitcoin. But, but I'm going to give you some information that, 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 that you know, doesn't have anything to do with me and my personal opinion about Bitcoin. I'm just telling you what's going on in the market, right? Here's the headline. What will happen to Bitcoin prices if the Fed lowers interest rates? So this is just what can happen to Bitcoin if the Fed, not, not if, when the Fed reduces interest rate, because they're going to reduce them. So, so here, here's, here's something that I read that I thought would... would, would would be helpful information to you guys, especially to you people who, who actually buy Bitcoin. Multiple market players are now expecting the Federal Reserve to lower rates during the summer. The interplay between the Federal Reserve and monetary policy for Bitcoin has been an interesting one and one that goes much deeper than just the inflationary hedge narrative. How might Bitcoin be affected by changes in the rate environment. Let's see. In the past, Bitcoin has shown a correlated relationship with equity markets. I've told you guys that. All they're saying there is Bitcoin and the stock market show a lot of similarities. A lot of similarities, right? As shown a lot of similarities. So in the past, Bitcoin has a correlated relationship with equity markets and has shown negative price reaction to rates going up in response to inflation along with equities. As I've told you guys, when rates go up, assets go down. I don't care what asset it is. It can be gold. It can be precious metals. It can be uh, antiques, collectibles, uh, memorabilia, it can be real estate, it can be uh, digital assets, it can be it can be stocks, it can be businesses. Interest rates go up, assets go down. Bitcoin's no exception, right? It's no exception. As shown, negative price reaction to rates going up in response to inflation along with equities. Since March 16th, 2022, the Federal Reserve has gone away from negative interest rate policy. So back in 2022, guys, back in 2021, at some point, the Fed funds rate was near zero. Inflation started moving. The Fed started increasing the Fed funds rate to fight inflation, right? So that's what they're telling you here. Went from zero to five and a half percent, guys in like two years, zero to five and a half percent in two years. That's what the Fed did, right? 18 months, basically, of rate hikes. 18 months of rate hikes. Throughout 22 and 23, the Fed rapidly 
raise the target range for the policy interest rate until July when they stopped. July 2023, they stopped. And they haven't raised since, right? They haven't raised since. During that time, Bitcoin would trade at a depressed range relative to its highs, though it gradually broke out from a low of around 15K per coin after FTX news broke to a started recovering. Then it got to around 30K during the last of the Fed rate hikes. So it, it, it was got down all the way to 15K, bounced back to 30K, and then started taking off. And now you know where it's at, right? Somewhere in that 70K per, per coin. Bitcoin had never really scaled in the shadow of zero interest rate policy and small interest rate raises before 2022 rush to tame inflation. So all I'm telling you is, is, you know, there's a correlation, guys, between interest rates and assets. Bitcoin is no, they don't get a pass from that, right? They don't get a pass from that. There are always plenty of factors that go into Bitcoin pricing. Normally, major events like nation state adoption, the approval of ETFs, bans, from nation states and failures of exchanges or so 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 bitcoin some of the things that actually take it up in price take it down in price they're just explaining to you we saw the last catalyst for bitcoin was what the etf them introducing those spot etfs that skyrocketed bitcoin introducing those 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 spot etfs was the last catalyst that actually propelled Bitcoin upward again, right? That, that's what happened. What, what's the next catalyst for Bitcoin? The next catalyst for Bitcoin probably is gonna be interest rates being reduced. So if interest rates are reduced significantly, you'll probably see another run in Bitcoin. Why? Because you're gonna see a run in the stock market. You're gonna see a run in all assets. Interest rates come down, all assets run, guys, including Bitcoin. Right. All assets run, including Bitcoin. There is always the tension between demand and supply as well as a peer to peer market. There isn't necessarily any external force that is propping the system up. And I've already told you guys that. Right. It's what somebody's willing to pay for. It. There is nothing else that props Bitcoin up other than what the next guy. And when they say peer to peer, that's what they're talking about. The only thing that drives Bitcoin is peer to peer. You and I, what we're willing to pay for it. That's it. There is no underlying operating company. There is no underlying product or service, right? And that's exactly what this author is saying. There's always the tension between demand and supply as well as peer to peer market. That's you and I, we're peer to peer. There isn't necessarily any external force that is propping the system up. There may be larger buyers like countries and publicly traded American corporations, but they aren't bound to Bitcoin beyond believing its mechanics and reliability. This is the opposite of fiat world, where the ECB, for example, is bought up a strong amount of European sovereign debt in 2002, an estimate of only 40% of Eurozone sovereign debt in fiat world, there are many forced buyers, but few forced sellers. In Bitcoin, it's the opposite. Nobody is mandated to buy Bitcoin, but there have been bankruptcies of leveraged services like Celsius, BlockFi, that have made them forced sellers, and which might be the reason behind some of the ETF outflows and some balancing downward pressure on the Bitcoin price. If the Fed lowers rates, it, it will play into the existing demand supply dynamic. The Fed will also likely set an example for central banks around the world. The debt buying and lower interest rate tightening for central banks will be designed to get people to buy into leverage and debt. So there you go, man. Those rates are going to come down. 
Bitcoin, that'll be a catalyst for Bitcoin and it'll probably send it higher. But know this, at some point, if that peer-to-peer -peer stops, at some point, if the market rejects the price, it comes down. That's it. The whole point of this whole cryptocurrency thing is peer to peer. Now, yes, you got big, gigantic American corporations and uh, buying big shares. You got micro strategies. They own almost nine billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. That's micro strategies. Right. You, you got companies like BlackRock, Grayscale, ARK. Investing heavily into Bitcoin. Right. But you also got the dark side of Bitcoin, Celsius, BlockFi, FTX, Binance, all of these companies, these, these, Bitcoin, these, these crypto lenders, these crypto exchanges, most of them have went out of business and lost billions of dollars of people's money. So you got to be careful with Bitcoin. I, I personally... I'm not one of these people who, who, who can put money in Bitcoin. Not like that. Because it just doesn't have a long enough track record for me. That doesn't mean it doesn't have a long enough track record for you. You got to figure out what assets you want to put into your portfolio. Whether it be real estate, whether it be digital assets, whether it be paper assets, whether it be businesses, whether it be gold and silver, precious metals. You got to figure that out. For me, the only thing I put in my portfolio will be paper assets, real estate, and businesses. Those are the big three for me. You got to figure out how you're going to build wealth over this next 10 years, guys. I I I've shown you what's coming. I I'm telling you what's coming. A and it's all framed around interest rates. I keep telling you guys, interest rates drive assets. Whether they drive them up or they drive them down. Interest rates drive them. We're at all-time highs right now, guys, with interest rates. Over the last 30, 40 years, right? All-time highs. They're coming down. If we know interest rates come down, assets go up, why aren't you buying assets right now? Why are you sitting on the sideline? Help me out with that, guys. If we know assets have nowhere to go but up when interest rates start coming down, why are you on the sideline? Because I get people asking me all the time, hey man, stock market is at an all time high, why would I buy right now? And I say, well, where are interest rates? Oh, they're at an all time high too. Well, well, what happens? What's the correlation between interest rates and assets? When assets, when, when interest rates come down, assets go up. So what I'm telling folks that, that, that rock with me, think about that. There's an opportunity here for assets to go higher. I don't see assets coming down when the interest rates come down, guys. Because a lot of y'all are sitting around here thinking that, uh, that, that, that something, there's a crash coming. I don't know how, how, how is a crash coming. There ain't no crash coming. We're not going back to the, the, the pre-pandemic prices in real estate. We're not. Those days are gone, man. You, they're gone. There's a new precedent. There's a new price point. That price point is, is the new normal. The new normal is the price point. Average house in America, $420,000. That's the new price point. Sorry. Can't go backwards. Got to go forward. My thing is, if rates are high and we know they got to come down, and the reason they're going to come down is because the Fed doesn't want a bumpy landing. They do not want the, the economy going into a recession. They're going to reduce rates. And when they do, guess what? That's go, just like the article said I just read. That's going to open up leverage opportunities and borrowing opportunities for a lot of more folks when those rates go down. And I told you all this before. When, when, when rates are low and people can borrow money, what do they do with that money? A lot of people either going to buy assets or they're going to spend that money so someone else can buy assets. 
They're going to take that money and either buy assets for them or they're going to take that money and spend it so somebody else can buy assets. It's still going to be assets. People buy assets. So all I'm telling you is think about your strategy. If your strategy is to sit around here and wait for something to break, I don't know if that's coming. I don't know. I think it goes higher. So I, I just try to be in the market every single day. This morning, again, what did I do when the market opened this morning before the live stream? I took my I took my one my one to three hundred dollars like I do every day. The market is open and I bought me some SPLG and FTEC. I do that every day. The market is open one to three hundred dollars with an average of two hundred bucks. I try to put in the market every day, every day buying two things, SPLG, S&P 500 ETF and information technology ETF, FTEC. That's what I do every day. The market's open. I'm just dollar cost averaging in every day. Some days I'm up, some days I'm down, but, but I'm just over time, over the next 10 years, I do that over the next 10 years, I'm gonna create off of that $200 a day, guys. $200 a day, every day, the market is open, maybe 200 days a year, 200 days a year that the market is open. I'm going to create about $700,000 in net worth just from that little dollar cost average exercise. Another $700,000 in net worth just because I decided to do this every day the market is open, throw $100 in there, throw $300 in there with an average of two. Another $700,000 in net worth. I don't know, guys. You got to figure out your strategy, though. You better be doing something. Sitting on the sideline thinking uh, th th there's a, a, another 2008 coming. That's the wrong strategy, in my opinion. That's the wrong strategy. I think, I think, I think the wind is going to be at our backs when, we, when, when these rates start dropping. That's what I think. So position yourself. Get yourself a strategy. Get yourself ready to go. We talked about what the Federal Reserve of... Philadelphia did with their research study on the gold standard. They're saying, hey, this might solve all of our problems. Let's go back to the gold standard. Let's not have an economy that's based on the U.S. dollar. Let's go back to the gold standard. They believe that will stabilize prices. That will bring back price stability. That will just negate inflation and deflation. I'm just saying, guys, we better position ourselves to be ready to build assets so that we have all the options. The one that has the most assets that produce the most income has the most options. If you have no assets that produce no income, you have no options. Your only options is a job. That's it. You got no other options. So think about that, man. Think about where you're at today and where you want to be in 10 years. Doing what you're doing today, will it get you there? Will it get you there? Or, or won't it? Will it get you there? Do you have a plan? Do, do you have an executable plan? Maybe Tesla is, is one of the, the up and coming stocks that you may want to consider. Now, I'm not a big proponent of you putting all your eggs in one basket, but I'm just saying as part of your strategy, if you believe Tesla is a company that can continue growing, makes sense when it's 28% on sale, maybe that's one you put in the portfolio. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's worth a consideration, though. It's worth a consideration, right? It's worth a consideration. So, so come up with your plan, make sure you're taking this information and dissecting it and, and, and incorporating it into your plan and pivoting when you need to pivot. Me personally, my plan is pretty simple. You guys know this. I got, I got three assets, three, three paper assets I buy. SPLG, which is my S&P 500 ETF. FTEC, which is my information technology ETF. And then the Magnificent Seven, which includes Tesla. 
Those are my three big boy blue chip assets that I buy and I'm gonna to continue to buy for the next 10 years to double my net worth. So if you want that plan, you want more in depth information on that plan, send me an email and just say, hey Richard, I opened my Moomoo Moo account, I funded my Moomoo Moo account, send me your wealth transfer blueprint video, send me the Moomoo Moo tutorial video and I'll send you both of those, right? As we spoke earlier about Moomoo, Moo, Brand new offer started April 1st. Old offer is gone. Brand new offer from Moomoo. Moo. And that brand new offer is this. If you put $100 in your Moomoo Moo account, brand new Moomoo Moo account, you put $100 in it, they're going to give you seven fractional shares. But those fractional shares are not going to be from just so any old company. They're going to be the Magnificent Seven. They're going to give you seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven, which could include NVIDIA, Tesla, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, and Apple. So all I'm telling you is, hey guys, don't delay. Get down to that description box and click on the Moo, Moo link. Get yourself the Magnificent Seven. You put a hundred bucks in your new Moo, Moo account, you get the Magnificent Seven. Seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. As a thank you for trying out the brokerage app. Now you're ready to start building wealth. Here's the other offer that they're going to give you. You can pick they also have another offer where if you transfer cash, stocks, ETFs to your new Moomoo account, they will give you a 1.5% cash reward match up to $300. Think about it, $300 just to transfer assets into your brokerage account they will give you up to three hundred dollars i'm just telling you so if you transfer ten thousand dollars over i'm talking about cash etfs or stocks let's say you got it at a different brokerage company a different brokerage app and you transfer it over to the moomoo app ten thousand dollars worth that's 150 dollars they're gonna give you guys it's 1.5% of what you transfer over up to $300. Those are the two offers they just started today, April 1st. One is put $100 in there, get the Magnificent Seven. Fractional shares, seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. Or transfer over money or ETFs or individual stocks into that account guess what they're gonna give you? Up to 1.5% of what you transfer over, up to $300. So you can do $20,000 between cash, ETFs, and stocks that you got somewhere else, you bring them to Moomoo, put them in your Moomoo account, you get $300. And then you can take that $300 and go shopping, buying yourself some more ETFs, buying yourself some more individual stocks. So get down to the description box of this video, click on that Moomoo Moo link, open up that new Moomoo Moo account today, take advantage of either the Magnificent Seven fractional shares or take advantage of the 1.5% cash rewards match. One of the two you can take advantage of. I don't know, that's a great deal to me if you, if you ask me. And you guys already know, I use Moomoo Moo as my primary brokerage account. And I have been using it since the beginning of this year. And I'm going to use it for the foreseeable future. Why? Because I like the app. It's very user-friendly. And it has in-app tutorials to teach you stuff. A lot of y'all are brand new at this. What a perfect app to have because it's going to teach you pretty much everything you need to know if you know how to find the information, which... I will give you that information because I did a Moomoo Moo video. So I'll tell you exactly where to find, what to find. All you got to do is open the Moomoo Moo account and boom, send me an email and let me know you've opened it.
And I'm going to send you those two videos, including that Moo Moo tutorial. All right. So, guys, I appreciate you. I appreciate y'all rocking with me. We're about 80 minutes into this thing. I'm getting ready to wrap it up. Um, welcome to the second quarter of 2024. First quarter gone, guys. Did you make any money in the first quarter? Who in this chat made some money in paper assets in the first quarter? I hope all of y'all did. Why? Because the S&P 500 for the first quarter of this year did a 10% ROI. So if you'd have been invested, you should be up 10% in the S&P. I don't know. Did you make any money? Or did you sit on the sideline waiting for something to go down? Or did you sit on the sideline saying, oh, it's going down. I'm going to wait for the crash. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You tell me. What did you do? Did you participate or did you just sit yourself on the sideline and keep yourself out the game? Or, or did you put yourself in the game? I hope you put yourself in the game, guys. Because there's no greater time right now to build wealth than now. This, this is the greatest opportunity. So, so get yourself in the game. Get yourself in the game. Guys, before you get out of here, lock it in with a thumbs up if you don't mind. I really appreciate y'all rocking with me today. We're getting ready to wind, wind this thing up. Uh, you know I'll be back tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time with more financial information to help you guys get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here, if you don't mind. Again, if you want those two offers from Moomoo, you got to click on that link down in the description box. Open up your Moomoo account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Um, if you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. Definitely share the video. Definitely smash that like button a thousand times just to let me know you're rocking with me. And I appreciate y'all, man. We had a good time yesterday in the live stream where we did the we did the Q&A. We didn't have a lot of people in there, but the people we did have in there, we had a good time. We had some some good questions asked. I just want to make sure you guys put this on your radar. We're going to have that Q&A every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. Eastern time. So put that on your radar so that if you got questions, that's a perfect time to ask them on Sunday. Every Sunday, we're going to do a Q&A at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And every Monday through Saturday, we're going to do just our normal live stream that will eventually turn into a, a video as well. So if you do miss a live stream, just go back to the live stream and click on any one that you missed and watch it. It's good information in my opinion. It gives you nuggets and financial tips to get you to your financial freedom. Well, guys, thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy. Get wealthy. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.